for a free booklet DVD called 212 Choices. 212 Choices for a fresh second opinion. Most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid, accepted. Not only super convenient, super. Broadway and 38th in Manhattan. To hit your cancer, see Dr. Lederman. 212 Choices. With Dr. Lederman, the best prostate cancer treatment is custom tailored for you. Each man with prostate cancer is unique and seeks the best results based on PSA, Gleason score, and stage. That's why Dr. Lederman's custom tailored prostate cancer treatment is most logical. Not every man should get the same treatment. Dr. Lederman's custom prostate cancer treatment is all outpatient. Our goals are your best results, avoiding radical surgery, maintaining your sexual and urinary function, and your life. Most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid, accepted. Call Dr. Lederman at 212 Choices, 212 Choices, for a fresh second opinion and free booklet DVD. Not only super convenient, super, in Manhattan, 38th and Broadway. To hit the cancer, call Dr. Lederman, 212 Choices. Cherish your life. Custom prostate cancer treatment with Dr. Lederman, 212 Choices. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non-invasively. He was the first in New York with fractionated brain radio surgery, and he's the first in America and in the Western Hemisphere with body radio surgery. Hey, Dr. Lederman, we're back. Hey, we're back. It's Dr. Lederman, Radio Surgery, New York. We're located at 1384 Broadway, the corner of 38th and Broadway. We're a private cancer treatment center, which means you're our boss, not the drug companies. You know who we are. There's no miles and miles of cold corridors and locked doors and strange looks. When you come in, we know who you are. You know who we are. We take care of you, and you get back to your life. Usually treatment's about 15 minutes. We take most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid. We have information to send to you. We answer your questions. You get to speak to the doctor, not a machine, not the student. There's nothing wrong with students. There's nothing wrong with interns. But maybe you want to speak to the real doctor. Well, if you want to speak to the doctor and get care, call us at Radio Surgery New York. That's what we do. We believe we're not only super convenient, we are super convenient, but we're not only super convenient, we're super. Super to get to us, super how you treat it, super that we take insurances, super that we listen to, super that we don't get kickbacks from drug companies, and we'll talk about that later in the show. I want to talk about another gentleman who came to us, <coughs> he came to us about six months ago. It's an artist, he makes uh, movies and videos, he's a professor of cinema. <clears throat> he had two tumors in his brain. A couple years ago, he had lung cancer, was treated for that, he had surgery. And now the cancer spread to the brain, there's two nodules. He went to a hospital and went to the emergency room, and sometimes when you go to one hospital, you go ping, pang, pang, to, you end up seeing all the doctors, and they all kind of do their thing on you. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you seem like you're even lost in the system. So he went ping, pang, pong in the system, and they said, well, you need to have your brain operated on. And before he knew it, without a second opinion, they opened up his head. He had two tumors. So this is a story of two tumors, kind of like a tale of two cities. This is a tale of two brain metastases. Now, one brain metastasis was resected, and he was left impaired. It's taken him months and months and months, somebody six months to convalesce, to get his speech back and his action back. The other tumor was left there. So you can ask, wow, if you're going to remove one tumor and leave another tumor, is there a better option? Well, we think there is. And that's what we've done. We were the first ones in New York to bring radio surgery, which is pinpoint treatment. We focus the beam just on the tumor, not on healthy tissues. We don't do whole brain treatment unless that's what you want. Of 
course, the patient is always the boss. The patient is the president of the United States, their body. So we respect always what the patient wants. But on the other hand, we talk to the patient. <coughs> and when the patient asks for advice, we give advice. So most people don't want their healthy brain radiated. The brain is big. Let's say it's like a big melon. And if a cancer is like a watermelon seed in there, why would you want the whole brain radiated when you can just hit the seed, the cancer, and leave the rest of the brain alone? So this man, remember, he had two tumors. One, they opened up his head. He has a big scar from ear to ear on top of his head. So imagine going on the top. And then he came to us with these two spots. Now we know that surgery for brain metastasis doesn't remove all the cells and the cells can easily grow back. So that even the spot that had surgery needs to be treated and then the second spot was left to grow. So we had to treat that too, really. And the patient agreed and I thought it was the most logical approach. Save his brain, hit the cancer in the brain but not hurt his healthy brain. And we did that. And throughout the course his wound never healed well. Usually the brain gets a lot of blood supply. Usually um, scars or incisions in the head area heal quickly. And this case was unusual in that, not a case, it's a human being. This human being, this man, just the wound never healed. It was a big scab. All the time it was a big scab. And I told him how to get rid of the scab, and he tried to get rid of the scab, and just wouldn't go away. And now six months later, he had, remember, both areas treated, the area where the tumor was resected. We had the bed of the tumor treated with focused beam treatment and also that second tumor. He's had follow-up testing. Follow-up testing shows both areas are fine. And yet he went to the neurosurgeon this week, and the neurosurgeon examined him, removed some of the scab, and he removed the scab. He saw that the skin was gone that the skin never healed, and told the man to go to the plastic surgeon next door. The plastic surgeon said, you need surgery. The patient said, I don't really want plastic surgery. Went home, called us up, came in, got a second opinion, came to us, and I was left with a difficult task to tell this man that the surgical wound didn't heal that maybe it was from the diabetes, maybe it was how the surgery was done. Both tumors are dead. He's had follow-up MRIs. So we were able to treat the second tumor without cutting, without bleeding. Compared to the first tumor, we had the big incision, the big operation, the wound that didn't heal, and now he's going to have to go back for another operation to fix up the wound from the first operation. So it's a tale of two cities a tale of two cancers, a tale of two metastases, one treated just with non-invasive, outpatient, focused beam, fractionated brain radiosurgery, another one that had surgery, and now six months later still the wound doesn't heal. So I think it's easy to see why our work is so appealing. With our work, there is great success, very high success in stopping the cancer, shrinking the cancer, making it go away, which has happened here. We don't have cutting. We don't have bleeding. We don't have screws in the head. We don't have hospital stays. We don't have pain. You just hit the cancer. Hit the cancer and leave the patient alone. Let him live his life. My gosh, this man is working now, but he's going to have to go through major surgery. They're going to have to open up his head again. They're going to have to try, take out the hardware clean out that whole wound, make sure it doesn't get infected, replace the hardware so the bones stay in the right position, and then take skin from another part of his body to transfer to this wound that just hasn't healed. So, wow, what a difference a decision makes how to get the best treatment. So we wish this man well. Thank God he's in complete remission. We just ordered a new PET scan and a brain MRI to make sure everything is fine. And then he's going to have to speak to the surgeon about getting this wound cleaned up. The wound that with radio surgery doesn't exist. Wow, it just doesn't exist. Hey, there's a new article talking about conflict of interest. 
So many patients come to me and said, ah, I went to XYZ hospital and they told me to have chemo and I went to this hospital told me to have chemo and no one talked to me about radio surgery, but they talk about chemo all the time. And patients come very frequently to say that. Now, is that because chemo is better or is it because there's a conflict of interest? And there's an article this week in the Washington Post, which is a very prestigious paper, that is titled Health Care Leaders on Drug Company Boards. A conflict? Well, listen to the article. This is an article from Chicago published in the Washington Post, and it looks at this. Leaders of many United States academic medical centers, big hospitals, sit on the boards of some of the world's biggest drug companies, which a study suggests raises the potential for worrisome conflicts of interest. What does it mean? Well, if the drug companies are paying doctors from big hospitals hundreds of thousands of dollars just to attend a few meetings a year, can that sway their opinion to push chemotherapy? Now, the article goes on to say, industry board members oversee company decision makings and have a financial responsibility to the company. So the board members are supposed to make sure the company makes money. And the authors write that those duties could potentially, this is their words, compromise decisions medical center leaders make that affect patient care, education, and research. Wow. If the same people, the same doctors are working for drug companies, are getting paid so much to make sure the drug companies are profitable, then they go back to the hospital to work to make sure the hospital's profitable. Can you see something going on here? Well, the authors went on to say in 2012, they found 16 of the 17 largest U.S. pharmaceutical companies had at least one board member who also held leadership positions in some of the 30 academic medical centers. The leaders included CEOs, medical school deans, hospital directors, trustees, and clinical department chiefs. The compensation for showing up to a few board members a year? (coughs) Hold on to your seat. The compensation for showing up at a few meetings ranged from 107000 to $500,000 a year. The authors went on to say the board ties could be beneficial for both sides. Yeah, beneficial for the drug companies and beneficial for the hospitals. But aren't we talking about patients here? Don't we want the patients to benefit? If they're responsible for the drug companies to make money and they're responsible for the hospitals to make money, who's responsible for the patient? And that's why a private cancer center like us, we don't take any money from drug companies. We don't take any money from anybody, drug companies, pharmaceuticals. No, because we believe when you come to us, our responsibility is to you. Now, some of the most prestigious facilities, Harvard, Yale, UCLA, Northwestern, many in New York, are getting money from drug companies, both as board members and in other ways, to promote chemotherapy. Anne Boham, the scientific director for the Association of American Colleges, say that the study raises important issues for the public to know about. Wow, oh wow. So when you ask, when I went to big hospital X, Y, or Z and they pushed me for chemo, was that chemo for me or was that chemo for them, the hospital, or for them, the drug company? It's a little bit unclear. And maybe when you go to the hospital, you should ask, how much money is sent. I know in one facility they reported, and we talked about it on the show, Dana-Farber gets $65 million a year. And I studied there. And when I studied there and treated patients there, that kind of money was never given to the hospitals. 
So this is a new development with more and more money 